no, I'm sorry, Bill Smith, was the chairman of the organizing committee. <clears throat> and he and his fellow Arroyo Grande Rotarians got us together and formed the club. Five of us are still members, one of whom is an honorary member, that's Don McKean, one of whom has passed away in the past year. But the current members plus Arnie Doughty would include Kacho Shashin, Steve Curry. He doesn't like to claim to be a Rotary Charter member, but he was only a week past a Charter. Arnie Doughty, and I, I'm sorry, Harlan Silva, who was our first treasurer, though he came in a week late, and myself. We were chartered, and the evening where we got our charter was on March 15, 1984. So those of us who were blessed to be officers got to be members from March to the end of that year, and then we served as the same officers for the following year. So I guarantee by June 30th of 1985, we were all ready to pass on our <coughs> mantles to our successors. We met at McClintock's. I remember somebody complaining now and then about the fact that we had to eat steak every meeting. <laughs> At that point in time, McClintock's was open for lunch. Our board meetings were at Povey, that's the Pismo Oceano Vegetable Exchange in Oceano, <coughs> in their office. And because none of us had been Rotarians, those board meetings lasted all night. I mean, we were making decisions about what's the club going to do, what are the procedures going to be, of course, the fact that there were a couple of bottles of wine sitting on the table didn't slow things down at all. During our first year, we established the Fine Free Badge. Those of you who are members know the fun that we have with the Fine Free. And in my opinion, we haven't caught President Linda often enough this year. <laughs> but in my year as president, I paid more fines than anyone else. And I constantly had to keep changing the rules because they were playing games with me. Because in those days, the only way you knew who had the fine free badge was if you could see them wearing it. Also, the secret greeter procedure we started out here. One of the things our club is famous for, I think, is that people who come feel welcome. They feel that they are not only welcome, but it's a, an enjoyable experience. And we established that so that we were trying to be sure that everyone who came through the door got welcomed by at least one member of the club. Also that year, and if you want to see it, you can come look at it afterwards, one Steve Curry, who still owned the Aurora Grande Belt Buckle Company, established and put together a commemorative belt buckle in the shape of the United States with the rotary circle. And if you go on eBay, according to Steve, every now and then you'll see one of these buckles up for sale. So they were sold and virtually every member bought one. But for one year we had belt buckles, compliments of Steve Curry. Not too long after we got started in the 97, 90, I'm sorry, 87, 88 year, Rotary International started the Polio Plus campaign. Our district decided that each club should have a three year quota. And I don't remember the exact figure, but the quota for our small club was over $13,000 over the next three years. So some of the groups had well, let's take care of that. So the result of that was we organized a one-day reverse drawing. It was out at Tar Springs, and that's what we called it for many years. Now 
members of the club know it as Summer Sizzle. And in one day, we raised our three-year quota, and our club was the first club at the next Rotary Assembly for the district to present a check to the district for our three-year quota. We weren't around too long before we became known as, okay, that club. At one of the district conferences, we stole the governor's banner. That's a beautiful banner that sits up there that defines the district governor. We put it up the day the district governor was coming to visit our club. So it appeared over Price Street. <laughs> and I don't recall who it was from the club that was driving the district governor to the meeting, but as I drove along, they actually later had to point up for the governor to look up and see his banner. <laughs> and yes, he paid a ransom to get that banner back. One of our subsequent district governors was a member of our club, Arnie Dowdy, whom we lost last year. Got to tell you, it was equal opportunity because we also stole Arnie's banner and he had to pay a ransom to get it back. Tar Springs was our fundraiser, which continued for many years. About the third year, the decision was, and this was very much driven by Steve Curry, that we ought to do it through a community <coughs> giveaway so that members of the club could decide how's that money going to be distributed out to the community. So from that point on, from 1989-90 on, we have given the monies received through our efforts at our Tar Springs, now slash Summer Sissel, through recommendations from our club members as to what organization should receive the money. Along the way, McClintock's decided to stop serving lunch, so we couldn't get those baseball sticks anymore. So we moved to what was then William Cody's, now known as A.J. Spurs, and from then we moved to Pelican Point, which is now known as Ventana Grill. 1996 is a memorable year in this club. In that year, one Connie O'Henley was recommended for membership by Paul Jones and the district had said to all clubs you shall begin to bring in female members. So the board approved Connie. She came into the club. Sandy Lubin was the president, bless his soul, <laughs> and upon that action, 22 of our male members, because remember at that point it was all men, 22 of the members walked. <laughs> Incidentally, the next year, the Rotarian of the Year Award was established, promoted by Steve Curry, and the Rotarian of the Year for the very first time was Sandy Lubin, because he survived all that travail. <laughs> we have had two members serve as district governors, Arnie Dowdy, as I think I mentioned before, and Scott Metcalf. In the year 2000, our club established its own individual foundation. And the person who led that was Don Weber. Don is the godfather of our own Rotary Foundation Club Foundation. Shortly after that, the decision was in order to raise money for the foundation, we should run a golf tournament. So everyone present ought to be looking at the idea of being part of the golf tournament coming up later this spring. We hit 60 members about 10 years ago. And the decision was, 
okay, we really don't want to grow too much beyond 60. That position taken more by Steve Curry than anyone else, but some of the rest agreed. What is this? So the decision was, let's sponsor a new Rotary Club. Just as the Arroyo Grande Club had sponsored us back in 1984, let's go ahead and sponsor a new Rotary Club, Glover Beach. So Steve and I served as co-chairs. I provided about 2% of the energy and effort, and Steve provided the other 98%. And the new club was chartered in 2003, and Steve is not only the godfather, but he is an honorary member of that club. And to this day, he not only comes to our meetings on Tuesday, but also goes to their meetings Wednesday morning. <laughs> Up to this point, I've been talking about our club and our members. But now let's take a look at the broader picture. Internationally, in the life of our club from 1984 to the present time, we have contributed collectively as members a grand total of in excess of $352,000. In the course of that time, naming 294 people as Paul Harris Fellows. We became a 100% Paul Harris Club. And once you establish that, you never lose it. Today, we may have one or two members who do not currently hold the Paul Harris, but our presidents and our other members make every effort to have new members become Paul Harris Fellows as soon as possible, sometimes actually donating the thousand dollars to make that possible. <laughs> Let me talk briefly about local projects and then international projects. Locally, we've done a whole bunch of things. And Rotary is a service-centered organization that is both local and international. Locally, back in 2005, which was the centennial year for Rotary, our 100th anniversary year, we had our project for the centennial project as the Dinosaur Caves project. Some of us in the room got our fingernails filled with dirt as we worked there at Dinosaur Caves to do a whole bunch of work. Plus, we raised $95,000 to help support that project. So today you have the Rotary Amphitheater and the sidewalk in front of it and a lot of other stuff that we did. In addition to that, we had a year in which we worked together to renovate the youth house in in Pismo Beach. That's the house that's used by the YMCA, by the Boy Scouts, by a number of youth organizations. Uh, we had a great time doing it. The last final step in the project was putting in a <laughs> handicapped ramp in the back. Probably the ramp in the back cost as much as the whole project prior to that. Also, we did a project at the FFA farm at Arroyo Grande High School, which is a combination of effort on our part, the Grover Beach, the Grover Beach Club and the Arroyo Grande Club. We painted everything green that wasn't moving. <laughs> Plus, they fixed things like the stalls, etc. We've also done projects within the local area, like a literacy program. Bill Racine, a past president who's with us today, came back from an assembly at the district level and said, you know, we got this great idea. And so we've been giving out three to third graders books for the last 13 years. Every third grader used to get a McGruff and Me book. Now it's a sports scholarship book. 
We also have an annual four-way essay contest that the district supports and we have supported. We also support RILA, the Rotary Youth Leadership Academy. We also support scholarships for the high school. So we've done a lot of things locally. But the real magic to Rotary is international. It's not just local. So on the international scale, and I've got to tell you folks, much of this happens behind the scenes through the efforts of Steve Curry. If there's one guy in our club that goes unsung as a great hero, it's Steve. <laughs> Thank you, John. You, you said that exactly the way I wrote it. <laughs> Because our international projects are funded not just with our own local money, but by district funds and Rotary International funds. I'm not about to try to give you a litany of all of the projects we've done during the years, but I am going to cite a few of them. And for the newer members, listen carefully because you're going to hear some things that you've never heard before. For example, did you know that one of our projects built a cafeteria in a school in Peru. Did you know that we had a project that involved cataract surgeries in Honduras? Did you know we provided a fire truck for a community in Mexico that had no truck? Did you know we provided a fire truck for the Philippines? Did you know we have a retired fire chief who's a member of the club? <laughs> we have provided funds to dig water wells in places like Uganda, Nigeria, South Africa. You read a whole lot and hear a whole lot about the need for good, pure water in the world. We have been a part of that effort. More recently, we were involved in a project in South Africa where we provided funds to help build a cafeteria so the kids at that school could have both a breakfast and a lunch at the school, as well as funds to improve their classrooms. And also importantly, that's one of the places we funded a well so that the kids, when they came to school, didn't have to take buckets and walk for one hour to get fresh water and walk back for one hour and then go to school. Now the well is right at their school. Also, we sponsored a project in Thailand which helped to fund a local, what is known as a small loan bank. Individual members of the community were trained and then given loans, small amounts, to start what you and I would call a very small company. The funds that they then make in that company were used by them to repay the loan, which then means we can turn around and loan that money back out again. So in Thailand, we have made an impact. What you don't know is we had a project once where we provided the funds for a mechanical clock, cower. Cloud, no, cow, C O W. I'm not sure I knew what a mechanical cow was until that happened. But this is a machine that converts soy, I believe, into soy milk. It arrived in Brazil, it <coughs> sat in a customs warehouse for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. Steve Curry worked endless hours to get that thing released. So again, what you need to know is some of the projects which we have funded have required a lot of effort on the part of our people to get them to the end result where they are of, in fact, some benefit to the members. Some of our members have traveled across the seas to help out. In some cases, some of our projects, for example, Honduras, Mexico, Africa, the Philippines. 
I'm talking about members like Martha, Terry Thiebik, Steve Adams, Arnie Dowdy. Also, we've had members participate in National Immunization Days. Again, Arnie, Terry Thiebik, Keith Slocum. Rotary is both local and international. I believe our club can stand proud for 30 years of experience. Thank you. Unfortunately, one of our charter members, uh, Trajo, wasn't able to attend tonight, but uh, he sent a representative to uh, give us a message. And so if uh, Vicki Johansson would come up. Vicki, here. Oh, okay. come on. Thank you. Um, I'm so pleased to be here on behalf of Concho today, and um, this is one of my favorite groups to get to visit when I get to come to your Rotary Club. As John mentioned, you're one of the most welcoming groups that I, I get to go and see, and I always appreciate that. There's always somebody friendly to sit with um, at a table, and um, one time at your Rotary Club, I had gone there, um, Concho took me to, because Connie was going to get an award. And I sat there listening, waiting for them to call Connie's name as they described the award. And lo and behold, um, I was bestowed a Paul Harris Fellow. So um, on behalf of Concho, and that was very special. I always remember that day. Connie didn't give it away at all. Um, so um, on behalf of Assemblyman Concho Ashajian, I'd like to present a certificate um, maybe to, to Steve, John, or Linda. Uh, all, well, to, to all, all of you, to all the whole club, I'd like to present this certificate, um, which is an assembly certificate of recognition presented to Rotary Club of Pismo Beach Five Cities in celebration of your 30-year anniversary of commitment to service above self. <coughs> She reminded me that um, John had one mistake that, uh, besides all the gushing stuff about me, <laughs> he had one mistake in there, and that was that uh, when Connie came into our club, actually uh, Paul Jones was not his propo her proposer, Sandy Lubin was. He was our president. He also proposed uh, Connie, so anything that's happened since then, blame it on Sandy. <laughs> All right, let's move on here. We have, uh, right now we're gonna move on to, uh, and I'd like to uh, introduce uh, our district governor. Uh, you've met him before, he's been in our meeting several times. Uh, he's uh, gonna talk about the history uh, in 1984 of the uh, district, and which wasn't, uh, wasn't the same number as it is now, was it? It was 524. That's right, 524, and they added a zero on it because they got so many Rotary Clubs. So please, uh, everyone, welcome Jack McClinahan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. I really appreciate it. I, I tried to face out that state standing ovation business. But the thing is, my wife had been district governor in 07, 08, and I always had to stand and do the standing ovation. So <laughs> turn about it's fair play. I don't know how you knew what I was going to talk about. I never knew what I'm going to talk about. One of our one of our current presidents uh, down in Simi Valley, he, he adopted a theme for the year of practice random kindness. 
And I said, that's great, John, because everything I do is random. And if it happens to be kind, then I'm practicing random kindness. It's going to be great. So anyway, it's great to be here at the Rotary Club of Pismo Beach, Steve Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it happens a little bit, actually, you're going to, actually, John, that was a wonderful summary of the club's history. Absolutely first rate, one of the best I've heard. And it is an impressive history. And, and of course, one of the, you know, when I, I went around and gave my official district governor speech, it was about women in Rotary and polio eradication. And so for the early women Rotarian members, I know it was not all roses, was it? Uh, and you could be a little bit upset with 22 members of the club you just joined leaving because of you. But you stayed, you stuck with it, you've been a wonderful, productive member ever since. Not only of the club, but of the district. Thank you very much, Connie. You know, there, uh, there's an affinity, actually, you know, between this club and, and my club, or, or our club of uh, Ohio West. In the, in the mid-1980s, there was a kind of a wave of uh, new clubs. We have already been to a couple of 30-year uh, anniversaries, and we still have some to go. Uh, there was a, a new emphasis on, on adding clubs as a way to grow road. And the concept, now you're not, you don't have to be a breakfast club, but there was a big push for breakfast clubs. And so, so far this year, we've been to Baker Street, I mean, the 30th anniversary of Bakersfield Breakfast, uh, Thousand Oaks Sunrise, which used to be Newbury Park, but it's a breakfast club. Um, we had, uh, what else? San, uh, Frank, uh, our past district governor, Frank Ortiz's club, Santa Maria Breakfast, is also 30 years old. Uh, San Luis Obispo de Tolosa is 30 years old this year. Our club, Old High West, a breakfast club, will be 30 years old in the, in the fall, just a little bit behind the, the curve. Uh, the biggest breakfast club in, in our district, uh, CD Sunrise, uh, is, is a little bit farther behind the curve, also, but also in that same period of time. The, the breakfast clubs, I, we were at a, 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 not a 30-year not a anniversary, but a uh, an anniversary with uh, Bakersfield South the other day. Past district up for Governor uh, Jim Barton, who was the, in, you know, the governor in 1987-88, when, when we raised, under his leadership, more than a million dollars for polio eradication, uh, said that he had kind of gotten the word from RI, you're gonna go out and you're gonna create new breakfast clubs. He said, okay, I'll do it, what's that? <laughs> It was, a, it was a brand new thing. But as a matter of fact, it turned out to fill a real need in Rotary. You know, I always say about membership, we have to kind of, our perspective members, look at it from the point of view of the prospective member. Will it work for them? Will it work for them? And it turned out that the Breakfast Club really did provide a, a new need. And, uh, and here in this community, Pismo Beach, also provided <laughs> a, new, wow. a real need in the community. I really appreciate Stephen and Linda so much for designing our district shirts this year. I should have worn it when you were on it, but they've done it over all the years, and it's one of the, I think it's been a great unifier in our district. Um, let's see, what was I going to say? So, um, I was talking about, oh yeah, the 30 year clubs and about uh, provide, supplying a need in the, I think one of the things that I, that goes back to the basics in Rotary that I think I've observed during this is that to some extent while John was talking, but to a large extent while I'm talking, everybody's looking at the pictures over here, <laughs> and which I don't blame you. What, if you. If you look at the object of Rotary, the, the object of Rotary is this. I don't know if a lot of people know this. We, we look at it all the time and kind of gloss over it. Is to foster the ideal of service. Foster the ideal of service. Get the ideal of service out there. But item, item number one under that is the development of acquaintance as an opportunity for service. Development of acquaintance. It's the friendships that lead Rotary. It's the development of these friendships that lead Rotary. And that's why these pictures are so meaningful to us. 
uh, particularly with one of our greats like uh, Arne uh, on, a, on, a, on a somber note, I want to uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that this week we lost another of our district uh, heroes, uh, George Palmer. George uh, oh, no. from Bakersfield uh, East. He was our district governor in 1989-90. Um, he was an educator, a music educator, a musician, um, a very funny guy. You never knew when he was being serious or when he wasn't, and that's serious. So you really you didn't know what to say after he said something <laughs> a lot of the time. Um, but George, uh, he was also known in his club. He was the, he was the perennial song, song leader for decades. He was the song leader. And he would, they would always do God Bless America. Except that with George, he'd always say, okay, GBA. You know, don't waste any time. Most of us are, you know the routine. And if they, a lot of times they had a piano player there to, uh, to lead them in God Bless America. But a lot of times they didn't. And in that case, he'd say, well, okay, tonight or today we're going to have to sing in Acapulco. <laughs> Funny guy. In in 2004 or five, when um, the year of the Rotary Centennial, George and also Bakersfield East Pass District Governor Chung San Do wrote a song for the occasion. The theme that year was Celebrate Rotary. So they wrote a song, Celebrate Rotary. And Jane and I and other people in this district uh, were participating in the Rotary World Choir at that time. So at the Chicago Convention, we sang their song, Celebrate Rotary. And what I noticed when they, they showed us the sheet music was it says, it says music, Chung San Do. Uh, lyrics, Rem Lam. And went, what does that mean? Well, George Palmer's badge always said Rem Lam because that's Palmer spelled, spelled backwards. <laughs> Typical George Palmer. So, you know, we'll, we'll miss him. We have these wonderful people in Rotary, and, and uh, no, I just thought I would uh, let you know. Um, let's see what I close on. Actually, I made some notes here, so I can make absolute clear end to the last. Let me say a word about your speaker tonight. I'm not introducing the speaker. This is under the heading of the people you meet in Rotary. Shab Alawar from District 5330 is one of those people. I got acquainted with Shab because I think it was four years ago now, he was one of our Rotary Rose Parade float riders because that was the year that we had the international teddy bears on the float dressed in different international costumes. And so the natural thing to do was to have our float riders and our, and our walkers with the float be in international costumes. So we have Southern California Rotarians from these various countries dressed in their traditional <coughs> costumes. So Shop sent us, so he, he was selected by his district. He sends a picture of a kind of a typical basic Lebanese uh, outfit, okay? And on the day of the float jet and the day before the parade, Shop shows up in this, I don't know how to describe it, kind of a sheet of Arabi outfit straight out of the movies. Nothing like the real, <laughs> nothing like the real costume. <laughs> but it was a hit with all the spectators and Shab was a hit because he's so outgoing and he's so friendly and he's so open hearted and so forth. So I think you're gonna enjoy meeting, uh, meeting Shab. <laughs> and just a, 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 a progress read. I should have talked a little bit about myself. The uh, uh, progress report on my experience as district governor is that I have, I have uh, three months and 27 days left <laughs> until June 30th. It's a fantastic experience. It's so great meeting everybody. It's wonderful. This one, is, we, Jay and I, were, as we were driving up, we we're really looking forward to this because it's not necessarily all roses, but there's so many friends here. It's such a, a great club who have one of the all-time Great presidents. Yeah. Those fireside chats without a fire are fantastic. I try not to miss a single one. They're great. 
And uh, although I have to admit that the last one, I teared up on the last yeah. one with the thanks for the memories and the pictures of uh, of one because the song always gets me and then to associate with the wonderful art is uh, is something else. So pleasure to be here. Congratulations on your 30th anniversary. Thanks so much. Thank you, Jack. You know, uh, okay, so I should announce that. Uh, there's most of you know that there's a um, an envelope on your table, and sometime during the night, you don't have to do it now. Uh, that's a uh, an auction envelope for you to put money in to buy the centerpiece. And I don't see one on this table. Grab it, check it already. Yeah. All right. <laughs> if you talk among yourselves, not now, and uh, decide who wants to bid the most, put the money in, take the uh, flowers when you leave. They're made by the FFA and Roy Randy High School, and I hope you enjoy it. People, uh, Ashley has informed me, have already volunteered to uh, buy the flowers, and I hope their tables will bid it up highly because those people are already committed. And that is, uh, there's a person from this table and a person from this table back here whose cell phones went off tonight. So whoever those people are, you know who you are. You're in the high bidder, and I hope your table will drive the bidding up. You know, when we started, um, when we all became a member of this club, we joined together and our first uh, our first district governor visit was uh, Sid jo uh, Cy Johnson, right? Is that Cy, Cy Johnson? And we met him, uh, we had a small group of men, we met him at uh, the, the CMR school district's conference room where John was the administrator. And so we met him there and we had a sandwich lunch and he said, uh, one of our members, our third past president, third president of our club, uh, Dave Benetti, asked him and he said, why is it that uh, you don't allow women into Rotary? And Cy said, if we let them in, they'll take over. <laughs> he was a prophet. <laughs> so, on that note, I would like to have our current president come up, Linda Fosti, come up and introduce our keynote speaker. Linda. Keynote speaker tonight is Shab Elowar. He grew up in poverty in Lebanon. He survived through a civil war and immigrated from Lebanon in 1978. He became a United States citizen in 86. He got his bachelor's degree from Chico State and his master's in structural engineering from Long Beach State. He married Dr. Brisha Elowar. Brisha is a dentist and practices missions to Mexico and Central America. They have four children one son and three daughters. All the children are college graduates. Shab joined Rotary in 1997, and Shab and Brisha are both members of the San Bernardino Club. Shab was a president of his club in 2002-03. He's been the International Services Chair of his club. Under his leadership, his club has pra uh, participated in over 25 matching grants in his district. He has been assistant governor for two years, youth exchange officer, district international and matching grants chair, four years as polio plus chair. He served on humanitarian grants oversight committee and the strategic planning committee. He and his wife have been uh, on national immunization days in Benin. He has been on many uh, humanitarian mission missions to Africa, Lebanon, India, South America, and Central America. Wow. 
Shab and his wife are members of the Children's Health International Projects, which works to improve the health of children around the world. He was awarded the Centennial Rotarian Award for his district in 2004-05. He is a major donor to Rotary International Foundation. He was selected as a district governor nominee for his district and will serve as the district governor in 2014-15. He is looking forward to serving the Rotarians of his district. He and his wife are looking forward to sharing their passions for Rotary as they develop a strong leadership team in the district and in their clubs. They will reach out for what they believe in, our youth, our foundation, <laughs> membership, fellowship, and lending a hand to the community and around the world. They will continue to support the Polio Plus program as long as Rotary, Rotary International has a polio eradication as a top goal for Rotary. From one burning candle, thousands of candles can ignite their flames and carry the light. Share your Rotary light that burns within you and ignite the Rotary passion of service to others. I'd like to ask Shab to please come forward. San Bernardino just to come here tonight to speak to us. So another round of applause. Well, I am, I am really honored and privileged to be among all of you in this district. And I know that you have the same, you share the same passion we do, especially your club have done a lot of great things in the world. First of all, I would like to to thank uh, President Linda for her passion and for inviting me to the club. And her, her husband attended uh, a test last year and her husband came back and said, after he listened to my wife and I, uh, you know, speaking about our passion on some things that we do in the world, he said we don't do enough for Rory and then she got me. So I travel all this distance and uh, to, to, to come over here to share what we, we've done on some of the projects. Uh, I would like to uh, thank also Ashley. Ashley, she, she's, she's been great. She made sure that I will come over today and, and speak for two and a half hours. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Uh, and Mike, thanks, thanks a lot for taking the job on uh, being the tech tonight. So, uh, I would like to, to thank Jack and, and, um, and Jane, they are great. Jane is great, she did a great job at PESS. Please give her a hand. <laughs> and my classmate, Loretta Butts and John, you know, the first time I, I met John, you know, he, he looked at me and said, uh, you know, uh, you know, you're so lucky. I said, you know, I don't feel lucky all the time. Last night, you know, around one o'clock at night, I felt my wife going all over me <coughs> from top to bottom, side to side, and uh, I thought I'm gonna get lucky. And then she stopped. And, you know, I woke up and I said, why did you stop? She said, I found the remote control. <laughs> so, so, my wife is not here tonight. She would have been, she would have been ecstatic to be with you. She was promising herself that she will be here tonight, but um, she made some arrangement to go and be with uh, our grandkid, the first grandkid, and also we have four projects that we're doing down in, in, the, in uh, the, uh, Mexico, in Juarez, and she participated in screening for the people, for the kids that need lift power, lift lifts, because we have another project on there, and also distributing uh, water tanks that day. Before I start tonight talking, I would like to dedicate my speech tonight to my sponsor. My sponsor, his name is Jerry Devlin. He's in God's hands right now. But one day he came in and I, I used to have a mechanic shop in San Bernardino and um, he said, you need to join Rotary. 
Hello, the West Hello, this is Rotary Club. Well, I didn't know Rotary Club from Sam's Club. <laughs> so he gave me his card, and I looked at the card. And being in the automobile business, I looked at that wheel, and I said, this is another driving club. I'm going to make a lot of money on it. <laughs> well, it wasn't that way. It wasn't a driving club. But I'm so glad that I joined because it did change my life. Now, throughout my, my journey in, in Rotary, the first job that I got in the, in the, in the club it was international director. Our club didn't have an international director at all. So when I joined this, they said, well, you're a foreigner, you're Lebanese, you could be an international director. I said, yeah, what's, what is it? I stumbled around in the club for a long time and until I found where my passion is and what you do on Rotary and what you don't do on Rotary. But I'm glad I stuck around because it really paid off in gratitude and all the things that we do in the world. Before we go on our trip, and our trip started on, on, on the screen, but before we go on our trip, I would like all of you please stand up, join hands, and close your eyes. And close your eyes. Imagine yourself, August 2007, somebody said, there's a great project that changes people's appearance, kids' appearance, and it makes the world a lot better place. And this person invited you to go with them to a scenario. You go down there, you didn't know what to expect. You never know international projects but you went anyway. Despite all the fear of swine flu, all the, the, the killing that's been happening around the world, you overcame your fear and you went. And the first time it happened that this mother with two cliff lips hand you that baby. You didn't know what to do, but you knew that you belong to a great group, and then they will guide you through. Now, please open your eyes. Look at your fellow lieutenant around you, and thank him for guiding you throughout this mission, the Rotary, and tell him we appreciate you, we proudly be able to you. My, my grandmother always says, with thanks and pray, all the good things will stay. This project, we came across it, and it was only a project to go and do uh, cliff pallet, cliff lips, and the dental work, and, you know, we didn't know exactly what it is, so we went on anyway. And, wow, all the club members, all the people around, they said, are you, are you going to Mexico? Don't you see the news? All the Americans are, are you know, getting killed. Some people, well, we went. We, we overcame our fear, we went. What a rewarding thing to change these people's life one at a time. Some of these mothers will bring these kids to these, to these clinics. Look at this baby, that's before and that's after. And that's four months after. So that kid, his life has changed because of action from Rotarians like us. But that didn't stop only at that. Now, after a while, all the young people start coming with us. Young kids, interactive, rural actors, youth exchange. And then we said, well, on Saturday, not a lot of things happening because we do the surgeries on Saturday. We screen on, on, on Friday, we do the surgeries on Saturday. And my wife, bless her heart, you know, she, she's a dentist, but she doesn't practice in the state. She's practiced down in Mexico. So she was practicing on me. This is Olga, look at Olga. Olga was 68 years old. She had double cleft palate. And we operated on her. 
And then she came in about two years later just to follow up. And she looked at us and she said, thank you, Italian. Thank you for giving me the dignity. See, Olga, when she was a child, she was born with that deficiency. And that deficiency comes from folic acid. It's a really simple to fix. But women in that region, they do not go to the doctor because of the cultural thing. They don't go to the doctor. Their husband don't uh, let them see a doctor. You know, so she had to live with it. She said, I remember when I walked down the street, I would be stoned. Because in that community, they believe that God is really angry at you. That's why God sent you this way. You were born with that deficiency. So they will not accept you in that community. And then the parents are not accepted either. So what happens? They will be stoned when they walk in the street. When they go to school, they are really pushed away, shunned away. So they wind up not going to school, not going uh, to, to, uh, to the market. And she said, I could not even take my kid, my grandkid, to the market. Not to the park. There are, they have, they have, I mean, many of the places they don't even have parks down there. Now, I am happy to say, you gave me the dignity so I can take my grandkid and go down to the market. I will. See, the first time I put my, my eyes on one of these kids, and they start looking at you like their eyes, what are you going to do? Are you really going to help me? The mother, are you going to help my child? And that reminded me one time of one of the ladies. I was talking about her husband, Al Braswell, and she, she's in God's hand, and her husband is God's hands right now. One time she was getting wheelchairs away for the people who were affected by polio. And when you, get, when you do that, you have to take them off. They crawl over to you from long distance. And you have to take him off that stick or whatever they got in their hand and you put him on that wheelchair. And then once she was trying to get one of these kids to sit to take the stick from him and sit in the wheelchair, that kid kept holding on to her hand and saying in his language, she did not understand what he's saying. She asked the translator, she said, what does this kid say? She said, this kid is telling you, hold on for a few more moments that I can remember your face so I can thank you one more time when I meet you in heaven. So that's the thanks that we look for. That's the thanks a lot of times you don't get them from your wife, from your husband, from your fellow relatives. But that's what we look for. Those are the things that we look for. When you look at these kids that you change their life, those are the things that you look for. When you change this person's life, you are changing the generations to come. In the process of their, their living or in the process of natural life, each one of them will produce probably about 60 to 65 kids or grandkids or great grandkids. So you're changing the economic cycle for that person in his, in his country to come. The Rotary Club don't have to worry about it. Kuwanians Club don't have to worry about it. We just change them. How much it cost? Probably three, four hundred dollars. And go over your comfort zone. Us go over our comfort zone to go and help them. A lot of people, they look at me and my wife and they say, why do you do it? What's in it for you? You see, when I joined Rotary and I got invited to Rotary, I didn't know what I'm going into. I didn't know any, anything about these people in this club. I thought I'm going to make money on them. <laughs> but later on, I learned what this is all about. You see, my English, even when I went to the meetings, my English is not that great. I graduated, I started my, my, uh, my, my degree, I failed the English exam. I graduated with my master's degree, I failed the proficiency exam. <laughs> so guess what? I'm sitting in a club, I don't understand much, but I understand 
that they do good in the world. Yeah. Let me tell you how, how bad my English was. When I moved to finish my education and I went uh, to uh, San Bernardino, I opened a gas station right on the foot of the mountains. And you know, in 1983, everybody believed in the, in the guy in the gas station because he knows all the directions. So I didn't know all the streets and stuff in that city. But somebody stopped over there and they said, Where's Mountain View? I said, Mountain View? Oh, just turn around, go back to Waterman, go up the hill about three miles, park on the side of the road, and then get out, and you can have all the Mountain View you want. <laughs> well, I don't know. That Mountain View was the next day over. When I joined Ulrich, it triggered something inside this child. Could this child live in poverty throughout my, all my childhood? See, I never knew that there were Rotarians that would come to the rescue of the kids. So in the back of my mind, I said, oh well, this is it. This child in me is going to be satisfied. See, when we grew up, we grew up with six people in the, in, the, in, the, in the house. We lived in one room. The bathroom was outside. And later on, they built a bathroom in the house. But when we sat on the table, there was a piece of cheese and a few, few olives. And if you eat a little bit more of the cheese, you will be smacked, thrown out of the table. When I went to school, I had one pair of shoes throughout the year. And then in the evening, every evening, it has a whole, you know, after a while it wears out, so the soul is gone. So in the evening, I'll pass by the little markets, and then I'll go to the bu buckets or the, uh, the boxes for bananas. Boxes of bananas, they have cardboard with, with, with wax in them. So I'll take the pieces, I go home, I cut the soul. I put it inside so I can walk to school again the second day. I have one pair of, pair of pants. In the whole house, it has one stove in the house and it was in the bedroom of my parents. And you stay over there and it was freezing. I'm from the mountains, sub-zero. And if you dirty your pants, you gotta wash them and stand, stand with them right by the stove until they dry out. And if they don't dry out, you smell like heck when you go to school the second day because it smells. I remember when the first TV came in to the town. My uncle bought a TV. Right now we watch TVs on our phone and you know anywhere we go, whatever. But when he got that TV, everybody became his friend because all the towns didn't have a TV. So the kids were not allowed to go inside the house and watch TV. We find the windows. The windows has bars on them. So dust comes in. The whole house is full. And we all the kids in the neighborhood, if you can climb early enough, you can hang on to the to the to the to the, uh, to the bar and watch the, the TV. And heck, if you fall asleep, you fall down. There are about four kids trying to come take your place. That's how we watch TV. Shadows. My father works his all his life as a laborer. So the only time he can afford to buy kerosene, I don't know if you ever seen it before, those are those little stoves, you put kerosene in them, you pump them, and then you put the water on. There is no running water, so you take a little, a little thing and you scoop the water and you throw it on yourself. And if you stay enough in the bathroom, you will die of carbon monoxide inhalation. So you have to take your shower. And he only allowed us once a week on Saturday because that's the only time he can afford to buy that. So when I join over and I see the poverty that it's all around the world, I, I felt it. I said, this is scary. This is what I want to be. It comes from the service of self, comes from my mom. My mom has always provided for us. She worked two, three jobs in the little city, just sawing and picking up fruits and anything just to make us have some food on the table. And she always 
taught in humility. She said, only the lowly branch of the trees are closer to the ground. And she said, when you plant a plant, unless you take care of it all the time, you water it, you give it love, you miss it one day, and that plant is gone. And that's how you want to treat your friends, everything you do in your life. And I really took that serious. But also my wife taught me, taught me how to be focused. See, when I married my wife, she said, I told her, you know, I'm the man of the men. Around, I'm going to get married, but around 6 o'clock, I like my dinner ready. I might come home, I might not come home. Because Monday night, we go shoot pool. And Tuesday night, I have a meeting at Asa Chocolate School. Wednesday night, I have glory. Thursday night, my, my brothers come around and we, we sit around the family. Friday night, I said, just stop. I just want to tell you one rule of my house. She said, sex starts at 7 o'clock in this house with or without you. <laughs> so that focused me. I don't know what's going to take you, what it takes to focus you. But let me tell you something. It's been a great journey. My life has been a great journey in Rory. And I don't think this journey is over yet. I hope you have a lot of story in your journey to tell and Rory. And I see from all your involvement, you will have a great, a lot of great stories to tell. You see, throughout all the engaging globally, changing lives, service, uh, peace, peace through service, and all these models, we can achieve what the Rotary will want us to achieve. See, I was changed, and I changed a lot of lives, I believe, and it's my journey is not over, just because one person decided he's going to ask me for Rotary. Who, uh, who are you going to change? Whose life are you going to change? By asking them for glory. I want to finish tonight. tonight. I'm not going to take the two and, a, two and a half hours. <laughs> My grandfather has always said, told me, when you build a big castle, every little nail counts. Every single one Rotarian in your club counts. Every single penny you put through the Rotary Foundation. Imagine only takes 60 cents to immunize somebody and save their life. Thank you very much. makes us all proud to be Rotarians and what we come back for every week and uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, we're going to... We've got one more thing tonight and then we're going to, uh, after this is over, Anthony uh, Solis is going to, uh, he's provided all the music, uh, he's done this, he's with uh, Epic Entertainment. He's a DJ, this is business. He's uh, volunteered to do this for free for us. Uh, he's a member of the Grover Beach Rotary Club. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Anthony promises me that he will even get this crowd on their feet and on the dance floor. So I hope you don't make a liar out of him. Uh, when his time comes right now, I'd like to uh, welcome our uh, charter uh, treasurer, and uh, 30 years later, Treku is still our treasurer. What an evening this has been. Uh, great friends, great 
the people. We honored ourselves tonight. We did ourselves proud. What a great evening. I've been asked to give the toast before we conclude or start the partying, conclude this evening's celebrations and start the partying. So join me. Let's raise our glasses to a group of community-minded people that came together with the idea of making a service club where they could give back to their community and the world. While doing these good works, they forged friendships that will last forever. And here's to the people that joined us after this club was began. And here is to the next 30 years where we will continue expanding and discovering new good works and new friendships to last a time, last last a lifetime. Cheers. 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 Cheers.